we're going to take a look at the composition of functions. So I've got two functions here. Um, this is the f function. The f function is 2x minus 1. And of course, x is our variable. Remember, that's what this means. This f is just the name of the function. I'm going to call this the f function. This one over here, I'm going to call the g function. I could have other functions too. I could have the m function. That might be something like this, maybe. Um, I could have an r function. And notice this time, I make, I'm going to make the variable t. Okay, so this here is the name of the function, and this is the variable that there is in the function. So this is a g function with a variable of x. There we go. This is the m function here. The variable is going to be x. This would be the r function, where the variable in it is going to be t. Let's go back, though, and look at our, our two functions here, the f function and the g function. And if I wanted you to find f of 4, what this means is take the f function and replace x with 4. So this would be 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, which is 7. This should all be review. If I said, what is g of minus 1? This, is, this means take the g function and replace the x with minus 1. OK. I would get that. And that becomes 4 plus 1, which is 5. If I wanted you to do this, this says take the f function, that's this one here, and replace the x with an m. OK. So I'm going to replace the x with m. So this would be f of m. So now let's look at this. Let's see what would this represent. This is what we call a composition of functions, because we're going to put one function into the other function. So let's go back to this, look at this. If when we were asked to find f of 4, this meant take the f function, which is this thing right here, and replace the x with a 4. So I put 4 in there for x. So if I'm asked to find f of g of x, that means take this f function, that's this one right here, and replace the x with g of x. Well, here's what g of x is, so I'm going to take that, and I'm going to put that in for x. So f of g of x, that's how we, how we uh, read this, f of g of x would be 2 times not x anymore, but I'm going to replace the x with g of x. So it looks like this. 2 times 4 minus x minus 1. And then we can tidy this up. So this would be 8 minus 2x when we use the distributive property there. And we get negative 2x plus 7. 8 minus 1 is 7. We could find g of f of x. Oops. This would say, take the g function, that's this one, and replace its x with f of x. OK, so here's the g function. And I'm going to take this and put it in here. So replace the x with f of x, which is 2x minus 1. So this is 4 minus, not x anymore, but replacing the x with f, which is this. Now we've got to be a bit careful of the signs here. So 4 minus the 2x and minus the minus 1. And we get 5 minus 2x. 4 plus 1, 5 minus 2x. We could even do something like this. Find f of f of x. This would say take the f function, that's 2x minus 1, and replace x with f of x. So here's, here's the f function, 2x minus 1. But I'm going to replace the x with the f function, which is 2x minus 1. So instead of 2x minus 1, we have 2 times 2x minus 1 minus 1. And now we can tidy this up. And we end up with 4x minus 3. So these here are called comp composition of functions or composite functions because we were taking one function and we're putting it into the other function. Or in our last example there, we took one function and put itself into its function. 
I got a couple more functions here. I got an f function that's x squared, and I've got a g function that's 1 minus 3x. So let's say we've got to find this, f of g of 1. Find out what this number is. Well, first of all, we've got to find out what is what exactly is g of 1. So we can do this on the side here. g of 1 means take the g function, that's this one, 1 minus 3x, and replace the x with 1. So the variable in the bracket is x, we're going to replace that with 1, so that would look like this. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So now we know that g of 1 is minus 2. So what we can say is, since g of 1 is minus 2, this is really like saying, take the f function and replace the x with minus 2. So I put minus 2 in for x into the f function, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So back in these other examples, we were just looking, getting a general, general function. We can also look at some specific examples like we did here, f of g of 1. Let's look at another one here. What if we had to find g of f of minus 2? So in the middle part here, we need to find f of minus 2. That's this function. So replacing the x with minus 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So now we know that f of minus 2 is 4. So then instead of g of f of minus 2, we can say, okay, now we're going to find g of 4. So we're going to take the g function and replace the x with 4. And that's 1 minus 12. And 1 minus 12 is negative 11. So g of f of minus 2 would be negative 11. That's what we get when we put minus 2 and put it into the f function, get an answer, and then take that and put it into the g function. So there's, there's some work with composition of functions. Now what if we had two functions here again, f of x, the so square root of x minus 2, and g of x, which is x squared. And we're going to be asked to find a new function h of x, which is g of f of x. Now another way we can write this is g circle f of x. So this is another way of writing the composition of function, g and it's not dot. Remember when we were doing times, we would write it like this. This means g times f of x. This little dot is actually a little circle, g circle f of x, which really just means g of f of x. So you'll see both, both notations here. So but let's get back to this. So we're going to find h of x. It's going to be g of, of f of x. And then let's say we have to graph it. And let's say we have to find the domain and the range of, a, of h of x. So that's what we're interested in doing. Well, let's, let's just do this here. So this means take the f of x function, that's this, and put it into g of x. So h of x should be not x squared anymore, but it should be the square root of x minus 2 all squared. Now, of course, when you take a square root and you square it, those operations would cancel out. And so we would get something that looks like this. So here I've sketched the graph of h of x, or y equals x minus 2. The graph would, of course, look something like this. But this is not going to be the graph of this function here. And that's because we've got to take a look at what the restrictions are on the domain of each one of these. So if I look at the restriction of the original function f of x, so I'll just write it over here, we've got a little more room. f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. There are restrictions on x in this function because what's under the square root or what we take the square root of has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x would have to be greater than or equal to 2 when we add 2 to both sides. So this is a restriction on f of x, is that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. And so when we make our composition function, 
And you can see it here, the square root of x minus 2 squared. Yes, for all of the possible values in the domain, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. But we still have this restriction in here that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. So when I'm graphing the function h of x, even though when we simplify it algebraically, we get x minus 2, which would be the straight line that has a domain of all real numbers, we must only have, whoops, erased the whole thing. We must only have values that are greater than or equal to 2. Not including that point there. If I erase it, it'll probably erase my whole grid. So this point here and any point to the right will, will be uh, the graph of this function here. So h of x will equal x minus 2 as long as x is greater than or equal to 2. So we can say then the domain is x greater than or equal to 2, and the corresponding range would be y greater than or equal to 0.